The birds are chirping, the flowers are blooming, and people everywhere are taking their allergy medications as their nose run, their eyes itch, and achoo! In bloom, players will be building their own gardens, stocking up flowers in their greenhouses, and influencing a public market. Over the course of three total rounds, players will expand their small patch of dirt into a fully grown flower bed. To set up the game, give each player a garden board and six colored point markers. Each marker starts at zero and will increase in value as the game progresses. Then place the market track in the center of the table with six colored point markers. Separate the round cards and shuffle each deck. Then take one card from each deck and place them face down from one to three below the market track. Flip over the first round card and then select three hybrid tiles and place them face down below the round card. Then reveal the first hybrid flower and place the bag of tiles below the hybrid flowers. Make sure to have three face-up tiles revealed from the bag. Bloom is played over a total of three rounds. Each round the player's gardens will grow marginally. In the first round, you'll have a small garden which is three tiles by three tiles. In the second round, it will grow to four tiles by four tiles. And in the final round, it will grow to five tiles by five tiles. In the first round, the players will start in their three tile by three tile grid. There will only be a single hybrid flower and the water can card revealed. On the first turn, the players may place their beginning tile anywhere in their starting grid. Then the next player takes their turn. This continues until no more tiles can be placed on the current round's grid, at which point the players prune their gardens in preparation for the next round. In the pruning phase, the players prune flowers to allow growth of their garden. To do this, they simply take a tile from any location in their garden and they remove it. When pruning, they must remove a total of four tiles. This only happens during the first two rounds of the game, and not the third. With that said, for each completed hybrid flower, the player must add or subtract at least one tile from their prune total for the round. Instead of pruning four tiles this round, I would either prune three or five tiles instead. Once the players have done this, then the next round begins. Next, the players flip the completed watering can card face down and reveal the card to the right of the completed card. These locations will vary from card to card and will offer the player a bonus upon completion. A new hybrid flower will also be revealed. The previous hybrid flower will stay face up until the end of the game. By the third round, there will be a total of three hybrids available to grow. The player who started the game starts the new round as well. Now let's dive into the details of what happens on a player's turn. Each turn takes place over four total steps. Refresh tile, select tile, place tile, and take an action. Step one, refresh tiles. If at the start of a player's turn there are less than three tiles available, reveal a new one from the bag and place it into the tile row. Step two, select a tile. At the start of each player's turn, take a single petal tile from the row or draw blindly from the tile bag. Step three, place a tile. Place the selected tile onto your player board. The first tile of the game must be placed within the starting area of the three x three garden, but it may be placed anywhere within this space. Any subsequent tiles must connect to another tile side by side. Flower colors do not have to match. Step four, take action. If by placing a tile, a flower is formed, then the player must take an action. Anytime a flower is formed by connecting four matching corners, then the player must perform an action. Depending on the type and location of the completed flower, determine which actions they can take. There are several different action types available. If the player forms a single colored flower, then they get to choose. They may add a flower of the match color to their personal greenhouse, or they may increase or decrease any color flower on the public market track by one. If a single colored flower is completed on a watering can location, then the player must add one flower of the matching color to their personal greenhouse and increase or decrease any color flower on the public market track by one. If a hybrid flower is completed, then the player must add one flower for each color in the hybrid to their personal greenhouse. If a hybrid flower is completed in a watering can location, then the player must add one flower for each color in the hybrid to their personal greenhouse and increase or decrease any color flower on the public market track by one. In some games, a player might fill their greenhouse with just one color. When this occurs, the player may not add any more to their greenhouse or increase the market for the maxed out color. However, they are able to decrease the market for any other color flower. 
The game will end after three rounds and the winner of the game is the player with the most points. After tallying up the score of the flowers in their greenhouse multiplied by the value of each of those flowers on the public market. Thank you so much for watching and please tell us in the comments below what your favorite flower is. Be bold, play games, be you. Happy gaming!